five persons, including actress Sharon Tate, were found dead at the home of... It's one of the most gruesome husband, crimes in American girl. history. So much hate, so much blood. The murders of seven in Los Angeles, including a beautiful actress and a wealthy heiress. There was this feeling all over L.A. that things had really gone bad suddenly. Charles Manson was the force behind the killings, but it was his mistresses who had blood on their hands. I felt absolutely nothing for her as she begged for her life and for the life of her baby. By midsummer, Manson begins evangelizing about an apocalyptic race war, which will be led by black Americans. He supports his dark vision with an interpretation of the Beatles song called Helter Skelter. Manson thought that the Beatles were prophets and that they were speaking to him and other tuned in people beneath the lyrics of their songs. So he told the members of his family, the Beatles want a violent revolution. That's what he said, that that next summer there would be this big revolution and that the chosen people would live in a hole in the middle of the desert. Manson tells the women and other family members that they are the chosen people. He says it is up to them to start a civil war by committing high-profile murders that will be blamed on black America. By early August, Charles Manson is ready to ignite the revolution. Saturday, August 9th, 1969. Patricia Krenwinkel and Susan Atkins are summoned by Manson. He tells them Helter Skelter is at hand. 20 miles away, in a house in Benedict Canyon, actress Sharon Tate is spending the evening with friends. Roman Polanski, the father of her unborn child, is in Europe shooting a film. Back at Spahn Ranch, Manson names Linda Kasabian designated driver and tells family member Tex Watson to lead the three women to 10050 Cielo Drive. And we drove to the house uh, with instructions to kill everyone in the house. It's a house where Manson and Watson once visited producer Terry Melcher and his girlfriend Candace Bergen. Melcher doesn't live there anymore, but Manson doesn't know and doesn't care. The house is chosen because Watson knows the layout. It is close to 10 p.m. on a near moonless night when the killers reach the estate in Benedict Canyon. Tex Watson climbs a telephone pole in front of the house and cuts the wires. Then Watson, Susan Atkins and Patricia Krenwinkel scale a wall in front of the house and enter the property. At approximately 11.15, 18-year-old Stephen Parent is leaving the estate after visiting William Garretson, a groundskeeper who lives in a guest house on the property. Garretson will be the only one left alive by evening's end. Parent isn't as lucky. Tex Watson approaches his car and executes him with four shots. Moments later, Atkins, Krenwinkel, and Watson enter the house. There, they encounter coffee heiress Abigail Folger, her lover Wojtek Frykowski, hairstylist Jay Sebring, and actress Sharon Tate. I remember when we first went in, uh, one of the people said, Who are you? And Tex said, I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. The first person to die inside the house is Jay Sebring. When he refuses to obey Tex Watson's orders, he is shot, beaten, and stabbed. All I can remember seeing is people just scattering in different places and running in different places. Patricia Krenwinkel chases Abigail Folger onto the front lawn, and she stabs her over 20 times. Folger refuses to die. Watson finishes her off, plunging a knife into her stomach. Then, Susan Atkins targets Wojtek Frykowski. I had tied his hands with a towel and then was instructed to kill him. And he and I began to fight. And I remember I was screaming for help, and he was screaming for help. And uh, then Tex came and helped me. Frykowski is stabbed 51 times. He is then shot twice. Finally, he is beaten to death with the gun. Now, only Sharon Tate remains alive. I could have, I felt nothing. I felt absolutely nothing for her um, as she begged for her life and for the life of her baby. Tate's pleas go unheeded. 
Watson and Atkins stab her to death. Then, Atkins takes a towel, dips it in Tate's blood, and writes pig on the front door. It's so alive in me, even just recalling it. I remember that I had gone so far and there was no turning back. Their bloody mission complete, the women and Tex drive back to the ranch with Linda Kasabian. The following day, Roman Polanski learns what Los Angeles already knows, that his wife and her friends have been found viciously beaten, stabbed, and shot to death. All of you know how beautiful she was, but only few of you know how good she was. When word of the horrendous crimes hits the newsstands, fear spreads through the city, especially among the wealthy. Esquire magazine said it very, very well. They said in, in, in the great homes of Bel Air, uh, terror sends people flying to their telephones when a branch falls from a tree outside. But this time, Los Angeles has good reason to fear. Coming up, in 24 hours, terror strikes again. Tonight in Los Angeles, a movie actress and four of her friends were murdered. The circumstances were lurid. The movie actress is Sharon Tate, 26. August 10th, 1969. Less than 24 hours after the brutal murders of Sharon Tate and four others, Charles Manson orders another killing. This time, Leslie Van Houten is selected to accompany Patricia Krenwinkel, Tex Watson, and Manson himself. We drove all over L.A. And Manson was um, very agitated. And Kasabian was very nervous and upset. And he was yelling at her a lot. The group drives to the Los Feliz neighborhood of Los Angeles and picks out a house on Waverly Drive. The owners are Lino LaBianca and his wife Rosemary. Charles Manson leaves the car and enters the house. So Manson came back, he looked in the car, and he pointed at Pat and I and told us to get out and go do what Tex said. Manson then leaves the scene with Linda Kasabian. Patricia Krenwinkel, Leslie Van Houten, and Tex Watson enter the house and discover the LaBiancas tied up. They were very frightened. And Pat and I went in the kitchen. I think Tex said to get knives or... Anyway, we ended up in the kitchen getting knives. And Pat and I took Mrs. LaBianca into the bedroom. Pat went to stab her and the knife bent. And she was yelling out for her husband. The women and Watson stabbed the LaBiancas a total of 53 times. Patricia Krenwinkel then adds a famously macabre touch to the crime scene. She carved the word war on Lena LaBianca's stomach and plunged a fork in his stomach also. She wrote the word Helter Skelter in blood on the refrigerator door at the LaBianca residence. The crime scene is among the bloodiest the LAPD has ever seen, and they begin a massive manhunt to track down the killers. Three months later, all of the members of the Manson family are arrested, but not for the murders. Police want them for auto theft. But when family member Susan Atkins lands in jail, she begins to tell her cellmates about Manson. It's the lucky break the LAPD needs. She told two co-inmates of hers that she was a member of a family, and the family was responsible for all these murders, the Tate LaBianca murders, that the police were tr still trying to solve. Susan Atkins' unwitting jailhouse confession leads to the arrests of Patricia Krenwinkel, Leslie Van Houten, Linda Kasabian, Tex Watson, and Charles Manson. On December 1st, 1969, they are all charged with murder. Los Angeles District Attorney Vincent Gugliosi is assigned to prosecute the case. Well, you have to... The name Charles Manson will always be associated with mass murder, but the names of Patricia Krenwinkel, Leslie Van Houten, Susan Atkins, and Squeaky Fromm will also be remembered. They were teenage girls looking for the same thing when they met Charles Manson. Love, comfort, attention. Instead, they found themselves with blood on their hands, which can never be washed away. Whether